Hello and welcome to Seeds of Hope with me, Nishani Ford. Today I have some very special guests with me and we're going to be talking about something that's um, very close to Seeds of Hope and very close to my heart. I have on screen Seko, who is the um, South African ambassador for um, Princess D Menstrual Cups and Bushle, who represents Africa as the Africa ambassador on Princess D. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah. In a nutshell, I'm very excited about this topic. Very excited to get going. I even wore your colors. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> in a nutshell, won't you tell me a little bit about who you are? A little bit about who you are. Seiko? Okay, so I am a wife. I am a mother of four. I've got two boys. I've got two girls. And um, I'm a businesswoman. I am into philanthropy. And sure, I wear many different hats all in one day. And um, I'm someone who, you know, who, how can I put it? My work goes along with my passion and my purpose. And um, yeah, in a nutshell, that is who I am. Wow. I suppose we'll go into a bit more detail into the different roles that I play. <laughs> okay, great. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so, oof. all right. I, I'm not a wife like, like Tiho, so <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> kids. <laughs> you got a kid out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, well, I'm Busha Bogu Kolwa. Um, so for me, I am an evangelpreneur. I'm an ambassador. I'm a commissioner. Um, I wear those hats. Um, obviously, we'll go into more detail about it. And um, everything that I'm doing is in line and aligned to my assignment. Yes. Um, and I speak about my assignment and I speak about purpose. Um, on what I'm here to do on earth. So every single thing that I've taken on, it's part of, part of the ecosystem and the bigger picture um, of, of creating, um, you know, a, 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 an Africa that's united, an Africa that's sustainable within itself, um, mm -hmm. with um, all the work that I'm doing. So I do humanitarian work, I do philanthropy, I run projects, I, I do different things, just that we get to the Africa that we want, um, as I believe, that we are all held accountable for the change that we actually want to see. Excellent. Welcome. Really, really honored to have you with us today. So, you know, there's so many exciting roles you have um, and your passion is very admirable. What, what energizes you? Sure. Um, what energizes me, honestly, it's the fact that I'm doing what I love. And I'm loving what I do. You mm. know, it has taken a while to finally get to a point where I can yeah. say I'm really doing what is in my, what is part of my purpose, what I'm passionate about, and they're going together, you know. So what energizes me is the fact that when I wake up every day, I know that I'm doing what I love. I'm doing what I've wanted to do for the longest time and you know what also energizes me is the fact that the different projects and the different things that I do on a daily basis getting that positive feedback from people acknowledgement and saying you know what we see this you know you know inquiring about things that I am doing that energizes me because then it tells me that okay I'm doing something right yes. it tells me that what I'm doing is effective you know it's telling me that you know the is a need for what I'm doing and there is acknowledgement and appreciation for what I'm doing. Not that it's something that I'm expectant of, but when you're constantly receiving those messages, those inquiries, yeah. it just energizes me to say, okay, great. I'm finally doing what I am meant to be doing. And, you know, there is momentum. So just getting that really energizes me. Mm, that's excellent. That's excellent. And you, Bushley? Um, <clears throat> definitely. I mean, um, just to just echo what Tejo is also saying, yeah. it's, 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 it's waking up and doing what you love and loving what you're doing. I think that's the yeah. power of purpose yeah. and power of understanding what your purpose is, because 
you know, no matter what happens, you know, we go through tough times, yes. but no matter what happens, you know that you called for it. So whether yeah. you're having a bad day, whether you're having a good day, whether, you know, your voice is gone or you're yes. in hospital, you're not feeling well. The fact is when you get up from there, you know yeah. that you are called for it. So you need to get up and do what you have to do because there's a lot of people that you know that are relying on you and yes. what you have to bring to the table and yeah. you know the pie is so big that i i really do believe that the, we all have a part to play and the fact that if i don't play my part there's something that's lagging you know i just want to go just a bit deeper spiritually as well um whereby you know I, i'm I, I i believe in god you know i'm a very spiritual person and you know, and I believe that there's the body of Christ. And remember that the body cannot function if, if, if one part of the body um, is not uh, properly um, functioning or properly in place. Like, let's just take, for example, a leg. If the kneecap is out, you're going to limp. So for the fact that if I'm the kneecap, the rest of the body is going to limp. Yes. And it's going to fall off. And it's not going to be able to hold. And those are the things that also help me get up every single morning because it's not about me at the end of the day. I think when you, when you've realized that you, you've gone into this, knowing that you're serving, yeah. it's not about you. Mm -hmm. You are on Jeez. earth to serve and mm -hmm. it, it becomes much more easier because you're never going to be greedy or selfish. You know that you're waking up for somebody else to have bread for somebody else to have a princess D cup for somebody else to have water, to have a pair of school shoes, to have a future, a, 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 like longevity on this earth. So understanding that also we need to create our heaven while we are on earth before we go up there, we need to create it here. And that's my passion. And that's what I want people to realize because we grow in this also in, in our in our purpose each and every single day, as Sikho said that you know it took it it took time to get to where we are, and each and every single day is different. I know that I'm different from what I was yesterday, from what I was an hour ago. I mean, I had an interview earlier on this morning, but I'm feeling very different now because there's there's just that elevation and that growth that keeps on coming, and just my biggest thing i i really rely on my word i rely on on, on the holy spirit in mm -hmm. everything that i do i always uh, find an interaction and connection um to what he has to say and what i need to do each and every single day yeah it's so important so what i'm picking up what, what i'm picking up and what i'm hearing you say it's important to understand the why of what we do and that energy yeah. propels you forward in order to mm -hmm. do whatever needs to be done mm -hmm. Because each one yes. has its own purpose. That's really exciting. Definitely. That's really exciting. And tell me, so you are both ambassadors for the Princess D Menstrual Cup. But before we go into that conversation, educate us a little bit. What is period poverty? What is period poverty? Should I go? Yes, go. Yeah, for I'm waiting for you. <laughs> okay, all right. So basically, period poverty is, um, how can I put it? In the simplest form, it's when people or rather women or girls are unable to afford sanitary, whether it's sanitary pads, whether it's tampons, or whether it's reusable, anything regarding sanitation. Um, this can also include the education thereof of menstruation. Yeah. This can also include in terms of facilities that can also include things like water, for example, to be, you know, and areas where you can dispose of. Mm. So that in a nutshell is period poverty. Mm -hmm. And I'll just like yes. to add on that, I mean, you know, when we even speak about period poverty, you know, as uh, just to also echo what Tsekho is also saying, yeah. is that when they like these um, facilities or they like these sanitary um, materials, whether it's a pad, a cup, a tampon, you know, they end up using things like feathers, they end up using mm. things like sponges, they end up using things like cloths, they end up, some of them I know in, in the rural areas, they would even put in that mud, you know, the mud that they make the houses with, they will mm. even use the, the, the hay grass, you know, then the worst thing, the worst thing that is happening, they miss school. Yeah. The worst thing that is happening right now is the fact that they miss school. We can see everything else. And um, 
you know, how unsanitary everything is, but the, the effect of that, of the unsanitariness of, 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 of even using um, materials that are not hygienic, you know, the fact that, you know, even that the way that a, a woman's, um, a woman's womb is shaped, we, we, it's not like a male whereby um, uh, bacterial toxins just shoot out. For us, they kind of harvest and they stay in within yeah. our uh, within our reproductive organs. So imagine that now you're in an unsanitary place, um, having to change your pad, having to or having one pad, or um, not to name and shame. Um, the sanitary, sanitary pad uh, companies. But if a girl has got um, um, a heavy flow, for example, you know, and they only have a pack of 10 pads, yeah, um, the and then they have to stay with one pad the whole day. Yeah. Um, the smell, number one, the odor of it, um, the, the, the bacteria that's just rotating in and out within your body at that point in time, and you don't feel clean you don't feel clean as a woman. So they're lacking a, a lot. They're lacking the education, even in terms of period poverty education and normal education, like the opposite gender. They're lacking um, the, the right facilities. They're lacking the, in, in the right amount of sanitary products as well, apart from even lacking the sanitary products. So yeah, it's, it's a very deep one. It's a very, very deep one. It's very deep one. And, you know, I spent some time um, in the Eastern Cape um, on an immersion project. And one of the things I noticed was the, the lack of um, availability and facilities for girls. But, you know, what broke my heart, I think, the most, and this is where, this is something that I'm really passionate about, is the fact that even if a girl could afford a pack of sanitary wear, whatever it is, she had to walk for, firstly, but also she, she then had to make the choice whether I buy a packet of pads or a pack or a loaf of bread, you know? Bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, 100%. And uh, yeah, and for me, that is a violent choice that a woman has to make and it's yeah. not going to be making. Absolutely not in 2020. Women and girls should not be subject to that choice. Uh, because for me, that is a, a violent choice that she's making. Also, the impact of her missing school, 75% of absenteeism in these areas is due to, um, you know, having a period and not being able to get to school. Because I found the girls were using mini, um, the dry mini, mini uh, leaves yes. from, the, from the harvesting. Mm -hmm. But also what was happening was that the girl that stays at home then is very susceptible to violence because there are people who are in her home and she's left unprotected the entire day. Um, and that would mean any form of sexual violence, which is happening, you know? Um, so it is a serious issue. Poverty, period poverty is a serious issue in this country and in the world. Actually. And, and I think, you know, more research needs to be done because I, I'm, it kind of mind boggles me, you know, yeah. and I'm gonna say this and whether I rattle certain cages, it's okay. But I think it's time that we speak about it. It kind of mind boggles me when we speak about equality, yeah. number one, and we're speaking about gender equality. And, you know, I went through the Children's Act as well. <coughs> and yeah. I went through the policies that they put in there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's mind boggling to me that you would want to spend money on, on reproductive health, which yeah. then you exclude Yes. Sanitary uh, pads yes. and sanitary cups or anything like that. But you want to include condoms for 12 year olds and yes. put in money for those type of things when this period poverty thing is affecting the, the GDP. Yeah. Let's just start with that. If, if we yeah. went into deeper stats, they need to look at that. It's affecting so many things. It's affecting a woman's confidence to even say, I am a woman and I can do this because now you are afraid. I, I mean, I, I have endometriosis mm -hmm. and I know that my day three of my period is extremely heavy. Thank God to the menstrual uh, princess D cup whereby, I mean, now it, it doesn't even have to leak. Now I, I can even tell you, I can go to my doctor now and say on day three, I lose so much um, yes. fluid, uh, yeah. uh, blood fluid. And they're able to treat me for that because the cup also measures. But yes. I'm always, I'm also able to, to, to actually then know that, okay, on that day, I have to change my cup 
every three hours yes. because of the heavy flow. Imagine mm. a girl that doesn't have any, oh. any sanitary pads. And that for me is taking away somebody's right. You're taking away somebody's legal liberation that they were born into. And we, we're sitting back as even a society, like it's okay. It's not okay anymore. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the conversations that need to be had going forward, this is one of the things that we should be demanding that actually it, it is even part of the budget for government. It cannot that we're budgeting for condoms and all of these things and contraceptives, and we're not looking out for the health and the well-being of women. And we're saying women empowerment Whoa, I think we need to take it back a little. Yeah. And it is something you know, in the system that we have to address. We have to address. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Seko? Look, I, I, I certainly agree on that view as well. You know, I feel if we can be giving condoms for free, why can we not give sanitary pads for mm. free? You know, or even if not sanitary pads, menstrual cups. And the reason why menstrual cups is because if you are giving away this menstrual cup to this young girl, she has got something that she will be able to use for the next 10 years. Yes. Are you with Definitely. me? Because now with the sanitary pads, girls' flows are different. Yes. Yes. And that is a constant thing. It's a constant thing because that is an everyday thing for every girl. You know, we, we can be 10 girls in class and yeah. all 10 of us could be on our period at more or less the very same time, you know. But I say if we could get government or whichever, even if it's a private yeah. institution, who could contribute towards these menstrual cups, which is something that will be sustainable for them. Yeah. And they know that once she's got that one cup and she is in grade eight, they do not have to worry about it throughout her high school, yeah. throughout her tertiary. So we could, that is just an investment for just one cup for that one girl, which is going to see them through. And then more kids, more girls can then come to school because now they don't have to worry about how heavy the flow is. Like in Bootle's case, she knows how to manage it. You know, you can measure it and see, okay, after so many hours, this is how many miles I'm sitting at. So they would then know that, okay, after break time, I need to go and just yeah. change it, rinse it yeah. out. And, and that is it. And tell me, um, you know, I, I'm quite excited about this cup because I'm, 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 I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about the fact that we can help a girl for a period of 10 years. This is, yeah. you're, you're saying that it lasts up to 12 hours, right? You can wear a yeah, cup yes. for 12 hours. So you can wear yeah. a cup for up to 12 hours. This is completely a green option. Um, and yes. it's eco-friendly. And it's eco-friendly. Yes. Mm. And it's so, biodegradable um, yeah. and it's medical silicone. That's the lovely thing about the Princess D cup. Yeah. And you know, I, 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 I want people to understand whoever's going to be watching us here yeah. that we, we're not just saying this because we are ambassadors, but we're ambassadors because we've trialed out the cup and we've seen it and it works. Right. So we're not just speaking because of the fact that we've got the title of being ambassadors for Princess D Cup. We've trialed it out. Um, for myself, I've tried out other cups. This is the best cup um, out of the three that I've trialed out. Um, and we've seen it work. We see what it does. We see how it locks in. We see how it doesn't leak. And obviously it takes about three cycles for you to get used to it yeah. um, as per normal, even when you would use a tampon or whatsoever. But um, it also takes peace. But the fact that we need to get sustainable solutions yeah. for the permanent problems. Excellent. We need to stop getting temporary solutions for permanent problems. If we're speaking about SDGs 2030, uh, 2063 agenda, and we're, sp we're speaking about climate change, we're speaking about sustainability, well, I I'm sorry, this is the best option that they actually have right now to okay. also eradicate some of those things and to influence um, the, the, those SDG goals because, they, you know, they get rated. Each and every single country yes. gets rated every year. This will be one of the biggest impactful things that they would have done for sustainability. We need to stop with temporary solutions at this point in time. It's over. It's 2020 now. We've got to move with the times. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I, I have to agree with Butle 100%. And I mean, admittedly, um, a lot of people, when you talk about the menstrual cup for the first time, they're like, what? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What is it? it? You know, so when I go do the handovers at the schools with the um, high school girls, um, the teachers are often very, very, very overwhelmed with this. And they're like, what is this? We've never seen this. But they always find it very interesting. And they themselves end up feeling that, you know, they would really like to try it out. Yeah. Because if you look at it, it's just something like that. Yes. Looking at it at first glance, some people find it a little bit intimidating. Yes. Like, oh my goodness, am I supposed to now, how, how is this thing exactly going to work, you know, but once you get to understand and see how it works and, you know, you get orientated on it, you actually realize that it, it just makes life so much easier, you know, it's, it's no mess, it's no fuss, yes. easy to wash, it's, you know, you just need water. You don't need anything fancy, just water, you know, and even um, to sterilize it, you know, you just need 200 moles of water that you just need to put inside this cup, which comes yeah. with the menstrual cup, you know, and 15 minutes and you are done. So now imagine a, a girl <laughs> who is in the rural area, yes. knowing that all I need is just this cup. Yeah. That's it just need this cup and I'll be able and to yes. this is cool. <laughs> you, you know just this one thing you know and I'm okay in terms of my periods you know the girls can still play with it um they can still swim in it they can yeah. bath mm. it. they can wow. do anything sleep in it as well you know but what we recommend <laughs> is that um because I get those kind of questions from the yes. girls yes. at yes. school they Men yeah. can sleep in it. Can <laughs> bath away. Do you understand? And honestly, those are genuine curious questions because they are not used to something that makes their life so simple. So like, much easier. Can, I have, can I really have a normal childhood? You know, is uh, this for real? And so, so she can swim. She can do any sport. She can carry on life as normal. Life carries on as normal. I mean, as an adult, I like Butle. I use the menstrual cup. Yes. So admittedly, I can have it in there and, you know, we, we get busy. Next thing is like, oh my goodness, yo, I, I need you, I need to go and change. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. So it's yes. so comfortable. And it, it's it just... Is. It just fits in like a glove. It doesn't feel like you've got anything foreign yeah. in your body. Yeah. So it's, yes, at the beginning, I was also like, whoa, uh, Sean's. <laughs> You okay? <laughs> this is something new, but once you know, it was like life is, is so much easier. Yes, so, yeah. for the girls, you know, it's just for them to just have their normal childhood, you know, <laughs> and being able to have this knowing that when they go to school in the morning, they can have their menstrual cup. And then I say to them, after school, when you get home, then you can change it because the first. Um, cycle, the second cycle, I always say, just check it every three hours, just yeah, so you can yeah. see how your flow is going. Because yes. you might think, because if you're wearing a sanitary pad, it's amazing how much it feels like, woo, there's so much coming out. It's heavy. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> like, sure, this flow. But once you start using the menstrual cup and you're like, wow, okay, so that's that it. <laughs> Oh, okay, it felt like a lot more, you know. Um, so it's 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 really something that I really think, um, like Butler is saying, that this is a sustainable solution. I mean, ten years is a long time. Yeah. It's a decade. <laughs> it's a decade to not worry about your period. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Especially from those areas where they struggle. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Can you tell me? Um, what impact have you seen on the confidence level of these girls once they've started to, you know, to just not have to worry about their period, to, to be confident, to go to school? What, what have you seen in terms of their self-esteem and confidence? You know what? It impacts it quite a lot. Because remember that as women, when you go through your period, number one, you're going through moods. Yes. So hormones are like playing with you, they're all over the place, you know, and you're going through period pains as well, yeah. you know, and now if you have to worry about whether your pad is leaking and 
whether you've got enough comfort then you you sitting with abdominal and back pains you know yes. then because of your hormones sometimes you've got a headache then you're hungry all the time you know you've got so so many things to worry about because the cravings are also skyrocket high yeah. and all of that so now imagine one thing being taken away from that worry you know and now we're finding a solution to say hey one less thing to worry about yes. for the next um, seven days of your cycle or five days or three days of your cycle for the next 10 years, yeah. you know, and it boosts your confidence because now remember that menstrual blood also does have a stench and a smell to it. Yes. You know, Our blood is, and, a, yeah, it's an organism. It, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all, it's all the, you know, how, how menstrual blood works. I think they learn in biology what actually it is that's coming out of their body. So it, it, it does have, you know, that kind of smile. Imagine in summer, you know, with all of this heat, having to wear a, a pad the whole day and you're wearing, you want to wear your short little dress, you know, but now you have to keep on looking behind and worrying that have I stained myself? Does it smell when I stand up? I can't play sports because if I play netball and I stretch out my leg and the wind uh, hoofs over, yeah. it, it might come with the, you know, mm -hmm. those are the realities of it all, of what women have to go through. Yeah. So this also boosts their confidence to say, I can be who I want to be throughout my whole life, throughout. So it doesn't have that in the seven days, I need to stop doing what I'm do, doing and stop functioning. I can function normally and not lose who I am because I've got something that's able, 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 sorry, to sustain what I'm going through and the changes that I'm going through for that short period of time. So I think it, it, it influences confidence levels so much and already our women are going through so much. And, you know, something that Tiko said um, that even in the rural areas, how really bad it is. And we need to think that if they need to think if I'm buying a pack of pads or I need to buy bread, we need to look at the statistics yeah. of what then this is actually doing in terms of then these girls dating older men for money. Mm. You know, we could actually do deeper research there. Yes. I think we would find a lot. Absolutely. We would find a lot. And the pregnancy rate, you know, mm -hmm. in as much as government is giving away free condoms and free um, contraceptives, it's not changing anything because I don't no, think not. we're having the right and the correct conversation of what is the issue here, yeah. you know? And girls don't have to feel less than. Then yeah. they feel included um, in, within the education system, 100%. They feel included even within the work system. You know, I see, I saw something that the UN was doing that they're doing um, to, to say that they, we need to get period leave mm. for some of the ladies. Because these are some of the issues that are not being spoken about. That yeah. When a woman is going through a period, exactly what else is she going through apart from the period? So yeah. I feel like the cup it just lessens the amount of other things that happen, you know, yeah. um, within that period. And you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about it next month. You don't have to worry about it in the next six months, in the next in the next 12 months, in the next, you know, like 10 years, it's a whole yeah. decade. You can chin chill, you know, mm. chin chill yourself, plan your life, plan yeah. everything else and, and do what you gotta do, you know? Yeah. Mm. So this, this really sounds like holistic empowerment because it enables, um, it, it's a tool almost that enables a woman or a girl to be herself completely, to be confident in what she does and to do so and to put yourself out there in the world without ever having to think about it or, or think about holding back on it, mm. you know? And uh, so but what can we do in terms of educating, you know, because when we speak about period or we speak about menstruation or we even speak about blood, you know, a lot of people go, ah, you know, so I'm one of those mothers that have educated my sons. My sanitary wear has always been in, in the bathroom. So they understand what that is. Um, but it's not, the case in every home. It's not the case in every society. What are some of the things we can do um, in our day-to-day, -day, in, in, in our circles of influence to, aid, to, to take away the shame, this taboo about having a period? You know, I can specifically start by saying when I was little, my mom, 
she's um, most moms i'm sure have like these called stock fails societies right so my mom has been part of those societies for the longest time since i was young till now yeah. and i remember there was this one society session that they had mm. and they had invited us right and they said we're going to have a girl talk okay you know yes and it was the mothers there and it was just the girls <clears throat> this time, you know it was just the girls and they actually sat us down mm. and there was that discussion about menstruation like mm. what is menstruation do you know and they some of them had brought a pad to say do you know what this is yeah so mm. you know back in the days in my generation you see that thing that pillow thing, cushion thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> In my generation, it was the stick. Yeah. Those yeah. thick ones. Those new thick freedom. ones. <laughs> new freedom. <laughs> yes. Those ones. And you're like, oh, okay, okay. And remember, they didn't have wings back then, and yes, they were not yes. individually wrapped, you know. So now they come with those and they're like, do you know what this is? You know? And, you know, to this day, I always remember that. And I find that that is where it all starts. I think mothers, aunts, grannies, whoever the caregiver is to a girl child, to a boy child, we need to be able to sit down openly with our children and yeah. just mm. help them understand from an early age. Because now, if I had not known and just known that there is that thing that my mother uses every single month, yes. had my period started, I probably would have been scared, yeah. probably would have been like, whoa, what did I, mm. I know I didn't do anything. It wasn't me. I, I don't know how this thing happened, you know, but we need to educate our children. Yeah. And I found that being an ambassador for Princess D Menstrual Cup has helped me as well to start that movement, if I should call it that, to educate. Yeah. Is. because when we go to the schools and do the handovers you need to take them through that yeah. either way so that they understand where this menstrual cup comes into the picture so for me i think we need to educate our boy child as well we yeah need to educate the fathers we need to educate the uncles because yeah. uncle brother father also have mother brother sister if not all three Daughter. of them but they've got mm. at least one you know, and they need to understand that you have a daughter, that this is what your daughter is going to go through. Yeah. And let us just have that open discussion. And I think if boys can also understand that this is part of human nature, this yeah. is how a girl's body is made up of, do not make fun of the girl. Yeah. I mean, I've got a son and I've got daughters as well. So my son needs to understand that when his sisters are going through their periods. This is what is happening. So that tomorrow at school, if there's another boy who is making fun of another girl, he can be in a position to say, actually, that's not funny. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. This is what is happening. 100%. So if we can create platforms at schools where we can yeah. come, because some parents find it difficult yeah. to discuss yes. such things. They don't even know where to yeah. start. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yo, Tseho, please talk to this child. You, you, you kind of better <laughs> at doing these things, you know? So I think we should start openly assisting even. I mean, the teachers talk about it at school, life orientation. Yeah. You know, but one could say it's the parent's responsibility, but some parents are genuinely afraid and not don't know how to. Don't so I think to. if we could create these kind of platforms where we go into the schools and we're yeah. talking actually the girls and the boys together yes. at the same time to yeah. say right this is it guys so when you see a girl with a sanitary pad this is the funny thing this is what you think is funny it's yeah. actually serious it's not a joke you know yeah. because now they think my mother is using that thing why is she using this thing yeah so they must understand yeah and it becomes quite a thing, you know, so you kind of want to hide it somewhere or put it somewhere or, you know, and you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't have to be so ashamed that you have to hide, mm. you know, okay. that you have to hide. Okay. It's, okay. it's actually okay. It's part of a, a natural it's process. 
that's what girls go through. So boys and dads and uncles need to understand. Yeah. Let's not make our girls be afraid and shy. I mean, yeah. there are single fathers out there. They are uncles raising nieces. You know, yeah. these girls also need to be comfortable to be able to say, Malume or, or Papa or, or Dad, you know, this is what's happening now and therefore I need yeah. this. And mm. dad and uncle and brother should be comfortable to walk into a store and yes. buy the buy the pack. It's okay. <laughs> the no. to stick up. I, I, I think you, you we find it so funny when you're standing in the store line and a male needs to get pads. It's the most funniest thing I've ever seen because you see a person practically exactly. trembling <laughs> and wanting to hide it because, you know, yeah. um, nobody must see that I'm taking this. Yeah. But, you know, the important thing that Tiro is saying that we need to educate them together. The fault that I saw when I was in school, school mm. life orientation was separated at some point yeah. so that they could speak to the girls alone and speak mm. to the boys alone because yeah. there's things that the boys couldn't, shouldn't know. Yeah. I think that's where the problem is. That's where mm. we've already created the segregation and the stigma is growing. We've planted the seed and we've watered that seed and it's now growing into this thing because remember, these boys are going to want to date these girls. Yeah, mm. these boys are gonna marry these girls, mm. so they need to know what exactly is happening, mm. because they're at puberty stage as well, mm. where they're catching feelings and all. They need to understand that if my girlfriend is going through this, it's nothing disgusting. She doesn't even have to feel ashamed of herself. You know, yes. the next thing you're being asked for movies, and you're like, oh no, I can't go because, as you know, Guti, it's that time yeah. of the month. You end up saying, no, my friend is visiting, you know, and you know that there's <laughs> yes. another friend that's visiting yeah. you and you can't go out. But we need to make it normal because, guys, it's really, really normal. It's not going away yeah. at all. <laughs> saying that, actually, just once again comes back to the, the term that you use, something sustainable. Because yes. if uncle, dad, or grandpa, or brother buys just a menstrual cup. That's it. One. He's done for the next 10 years. <laughs> he won't have a shopping trip. He won't have a shopping trip. Like, so he won't yeah. have to worry about that anymore. Just, just buy. in the line. No. no done. <laughs> then you are finished. You've had the conversation once and she's got her thing, her menstrual exactly. cup. And she's sorted. She won't lack because sometimes they can get shy to say they finished yeah. now, uncle. Um, I'm scared. Can I get go. more? Yes. <laughs> and then I like, oh, you see now, now, now you see. Now you must now go back. It's another story. So. Even, you know, the coolest thing would be that if dads, um, sorry about that. If dads would actually then purchase them when you've got daughters yeah. and you just put them in the cupboards, you know, um, that you know that they're already there yeah. because they don't rot. There's no expiry date yeah. or anything like that, you know, so you can actually do something like that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's so important. And, you know, the, the, more, uh, the more we educate our men, the more men uh, own this, you know. Um, and it's not an, a woman's issue because I hate that, you know, when it comes to like, oh, this is a woman's issue. So they, so men extract themselves. Um, and, and that is a thing of the past. We need men to step up and say, this is not a woman issue. This is a human issue. Um, yes, and definitely. we need to own it together. We need to own it together. Definitely. We need to make this available to girls, um, et cetera. So tell me, you know, I am very particular about, how I, um, because the dignity of every human being is very important and I don't want to give crap. Let me just put it out that way, forgive the word. So tell me, and, and I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't want a poor girl's solution. I, I want something that I can be proud of. Tell me what makes uh, Princess D Menstrual Cup that, that differentiator in the market, aside from it being sustainable in 10 years. What is it that... I know I, I, with confidence that I can, you know, I can give this pad out to a girl or the solution out to a girl, sorry. So I think one of the major things, I'll just touch on a couple yeah. and Tiko will just add. Um, one of the most important things is that it's the, it's the, it's the medical grade silicone. So yeah. the way that the silicone is, it's quite durable as well and easily and it's very 
um, soft, you know, yeah. even to, you know, the sensitive area of the vagina where you're actually putting it in, yeah. number one. So it does not slip out. So it's got like a lock in um, type of thing that it does after you've inserted the cup that um, take, you know, that doesn't make it leak. So once you've locked it in properly, you know that it's not going to leak. It's, it's, got a, it's got a suction that ah, it's, it's okay. got. So okay. it collects. You understand. Mm. So that's one great thing about it, the type of material that it is um, and how it actually locks in. Right. Number two, um, you know, it's, it's the fact that you can wear it up to eight oh. to 12 hours, you know, and the cup measures. So if you're a small, you know how many meals it is. If you're a large, you know how many meals it is. So you are able to know um, even how much blood you are actually losing, which is actually very good even for your nutrition and health to know how to pump up your body with the right the nutrients for endurance. And yeah, the yeah. iron levels, you know, girls don't even know sometimes if they're anemic during their periods because they don't know how much blood they're actually losing. They, they start wondering, why am I so tired? Why am I feeling like this? It's because of the amount of blood that you're losing and how long your period actually is. So we need to educate them up. So the cup also gives you, when you go to your GP or your gynae and they ask you these questions, you are able to answer to say that in a seven day cycle, I'm losing maybe a hundred mils, you know, which is quite a lot you know, it's over the amount, then they are able to also assist you and bring assistance. So I, I will just touch on those and Siho will just add on the, on the rest. Great. Okay. Another thing to add on is what makes us unique as well is the safety. You know, as Bulelwa, uh, as Bouche has already said, that the material, if we should call, use that term, is of high quality. So yeah. safety, it is safe to use. Yes. Um, and then another thing is that it comes with a sterilizer cup. Yes. Okay. Right. It comes with a sterilizer cup. And because of the silicone grade, you can fold it. Right. Oh. So, you, so you fold it in like that. Right. Okay. Fold it in. And when you store it, the cup as well, you yeah. fold it. Right? Oh, it fits into your handbag. Yes. Yeah. Handbag. Right. It's compact. And, and that's it. Okay. Compact. Are you with me? Yeah. So yeah. this yeah. is how it will look at the end after sterilizing it. But you get a menstrual cup, which assists you for the next 10 years. And you don't have to worry and stress about cleanliness and storage. You sterilize it in the correct cup, which is also silicone. Cone. So yeah. this is the kind of silicone that is used where, um, I mean, you could put it in the oven and it will not burn. So that is the type of quality. And another unique feature about the Princess D menstrual cup, that is how you will identify it, is because it's in the shape of a D. The stem okay. here oh. is a D. <laughs> That is how yeah. you will be able to identify whether this that is the correct Princess D, uh, Princess D menstrual cup. I love it. So those are the most um, important things that we, we could say with Bouche make the Princess D cup stand out. And I think just something to add on, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that it comes with the, with the sterilizing cup. Remember that in some facilities, there's no water or, or a basin, for, his, for instance, within the bathroom, right? So if I wanted to, to rinse my cup during the day, for example, when you've got a heavy flow and all of that, and after you discard of the mm -hmm. blood, right, into the toilet, and you want to quickly rinse it before inserting it. Now, the, let's just say the, the, the basin, even like at the mall and everything, it's actually outside. You've got your compact cup, you unfold it, you add the water in there, you go That's inside awesome. your little um, yeah, And you cubicle. use that to rinse you, it out. Yes, to rinse it out quickly. Uh, close it. Insert your mm -hmm. cup, come, uh, then you can discard of that, then you can just rinse it in the basin outside. Yeah. Done. Yeah, that's perfect. And you know, you know what I was finding as well is that a lot of the girls are shy um, to hang up reusable sanitary towels in direct sunlight because then kind of everybody knows I've got my period, you know, because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> young girls are, are very you know, shy and, you know, want to be cool and, you know, all of those things at that, that age, especially. 
So I'm thinking that this is probably such a, such a beautiful solution. And you know what I love about it is that it comes in this beautiful satin pouch, which, yes. Is, yes. which you can also recycle and use to carry your lipsticks and, you know, a little bit of... Yes, you know, and do other stuff. stuff. It's very, <laughs> it's very, very beautiful. Yeah. Very, very princessy. And then we've got the... It comes to the box, but I love the bag and the color of the bag, um, which is here. And I just want to say, you know, at Seeds of Hope now, we've been raising money for Sanitary Aware uh, for the last uh, three to six months. And this is going to be our product of choice. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm very excited. We are with, very happy. You know, yeah. Wonderful. This sure. is going to be Thank our product so of much. choice. So, you know, we've already started. We've already started our first um, launch. It's going to be in December. And wow. we're, going, we've, we've, we're going to start it with 20. And we're just trusting that it's going to grow. Um, yeah. So we're very, very excited. And if you want to get involved, Facebook family, if you want to get involved, please just contact me. Um, please let me have your details. And I just want to also just say thank you to everybody to date who've who've, you know, sponsored girls, you know, we, we look yeah. at corporates, but I've had individuals come on board and say, I'd like yeah, to do that. I'd like to yeah. that. And, you know, yeah. I'd like to buy a girl. Um, you know, this is a wonderful gift for Christmas. Absolutely. Say, I'd like to put this yes, in somebody's guys. Pocket, you know? Yes. Um, so please, if you'd like to get involved, just inbox me, get in touch. Um, let's get this into the girls' hands. Let's stop period poverty. It is 2020. We should mm. not be having this conversation. <laughs> we should not be having this conversation, you know? Let's no, we poverty. shouldn't. No, we, we shouldn't. And thank you so much for actually um, recognizing um, this wonderful product of ours um, and actually being part of the change. I think the most important thing that you are being part of the change and, and the solution, whether people can look at it as small or we see it as big. Yeah. Because you're impacting big. one life, you're impacting yes. it for the next 10 years. Yes. You're giving somebody hope. You're giving yeah. somebody the faith and, mm. and, and, you know, the trust that they can actually get through school yeah. and actually, actually have equal opportunities as mm. the opposite sex. So we yeah. really appreciate that. And we hope that even through this um this talk that we had today, we are able to raise the correct awareness that the world yes. is actually listening to us mm -hmm. and they can get a hold of us to, you know, um, to know how they can get involved and how we can even raise our voice even higher to say this is what we need to get done. And Seeds of Hope is doing a great job and would like to just say thank you and recommend you and say that, no, God bless you guys for all the work that you're doing because it's not so many people that have actually stuck their heads out and said, we are going to be doing this. People are just talking out there, but they're not doing the action. So for yeah. the fact that you guys are putting in the work and to make sure that, sure that it happens for the girls, we, we think that you guys are absolutely, absolutely amazing. And we'll definitely support you guys if you need us to come to the launch. Do let yeah. us know um, even how we get involved. I know you are in Durban, I think. No, no, uh, I'm in Johannesburg. I'm in Johannesburg. You know, okay. So yes. since you're in Johannesburg, if you need us to get involved, I think you can let us know. Um, me and Tiko can avail ourselves and be there to even do the educational talk, to be there for the handover and just to continue to raise awareness. You know, the most amazing thing is people don't understand how collaborations and how powerful yeah. they are because we're all looking for the same vision and the same end goal so if we can just collaborate also in doing this we'll probably reach more lives than what we are actually doing now because we all have the same understanding the same ethos and the same end game that we want to do with each other so we're definitely with you 110 <laughs> percent thank you thank you so much for your kind words thank you very much yeah um, we're about to round up and I want to ask each of you, you know, you, you're very involved, you're very passionate about this, really making a difference. What is your message of hope uh, for not just South Africa, this is a global platform. So what is your message of hope for, in the world today? For me, I, I must say um, my message of hope is start with what you have. Yeah. Use what you have. You know, so many a times we are waiting for the perfect moment. We wait yeah. for this, we're waiting for that. Maybe if, maybe that, start with what you have. 
whatever you have in your hands, start with that. And, you know, don't wait until you can impact 10 girls all at once. Just that one yeah. is a huge impact. Yeah. You made a difference to that one person's life. So start with what you have, whatever it is that you would like to start. It can be anything, whatever you'd like to do. Start with what you have. And from there, you'll start gaining momentum and you'll be surprised how things will just fall into place. But you have to take a step and you have to move forward. The rest will find you on your way. On the path. You want to go. Absolutely. That's brilliant. That's such brilliant advice. Just get in the flow and start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get, sure. get in the flow. Get in the flow. Yes, get in the flow. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's, it's amazing that she's saying that because I believe that we all have hands and we are gifted with this. We are gifted with the mind and the little that we have, this can do a lot, you know, and I don't think it's by mistake, the anatomy of a human being and how it was made. So yeah. we need to find the power within ourselves and stop being over complacent and making excuses why we are not doing things, you know? It's, you know, one thing that Tsiko said in the beginning was that the fact that people are coming back to her and saying, you know what, what you're doing has done this and this on, yes. for my life. It's not about your likes on Facebook. It's not about your likes on Instagram and whatsoever. It's about impact. Yeah. What have you done for impact? So for me, that's very, very important. And we need to, we, we need to just be convicted in who we are and stay true to ourselves and stay true to your purpose. And remember that even always be open, be a white belt, be open to learning. You know, you're not a know it all with everything. Always be open to learning and guys, everybody can do it. It's not because we are any special that we are doing all the, we've got struggles that we've got, but for the fact that we are convicted in what we are doing and the difference that we, we want to make, we've held ourselves, ourselves accountable for somebody else's lives. And we need to be that unselfish as people understanding that we are here to serve and for the change that we want to bring, we need to be the change. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This has been such an interesting conversation, such a powerful conversation and such a very needed conversation um, to be talking about menstruation, to be talking about this as a um, human issue, not as a woman's issue. And I really yeah. just thank you, Tehu. I want to thank you, Bushle. I want to thank also uh, Dr. Shamila, who's uh, online with us. Yeah. <laughs> she's, had to, she's had to engage in, in another activity. But I just want to thank you. You know, you, you're the founder and brainchild behind this. So thank you yeah. for the work that you do and for make, yeah. making this um, available um, for us as a tool in our hands to bring change. So thank you. We honor you today um, and bless you for the work that you do. Thank you, ladies, and, um, you. and Facebook family on Seeds of Hope. I'd like to say thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for your time yet again. And remember to, to contact me um, if you want to get involved <laughs> in this project, yes, making a difference. And uh, may God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. And may hope always light your way. Goodbye. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye.